Good day, listeners, and welcome again to the Three Feet Radio Show. It's me, Ben Carbonaro, your co-host, running solo today. Um, this is the second of our trio of interviews today. Um, more, more netball news, and it's the retirement of former Australian Diamond and former Collingwood shooter in Natalie Medhurst. And joining us to discuss her retirement today is Nat Medhurst. Good day, Nat. How are you going? Good day. I'm going well. Excellent. Um, first of all, you've called time on a long, on a long 17 year career. What are you going to miss most? Um, oh, to be honest, first and foremost, probably competing. Um, I know everyone says they're teammates and I'll, I'll certainly miss that side of it as well. But, um, I think doing it for as long as what I have, um, it's been that competitiveness, that ability to go out there and actually play on match day that I've absolutely loved. And yeah, I'm certainly going to miss that because I think it's something that you can't get in any other part of your life when you stop playing. Um, you know, that competitive nature, that ability to go out there and just go at it for, for 60 minutes against someone to try and achieve the ultimate success. So I'm certainly going to miss that. Um, as I said, I will miss my teammates, but a lot of it's the stuff that you do off the court. Um, you know, there's always a little inside jokes or little things that no one on the outside gets to see or gets to be a part of or really understands, you know, that locker room room banter that, yeah, I'm certainly going going to miss. Uh, was there any particular game that stands out as a highlight, either at um, the clubs you played for, Adelaide Thunderbirds, Queensland Firebirds, FIFA Collingwood, or was it the 2014 Commonwealth Games um, gold medal victory with the Australian Diamonds? What was it? Um, oh, there's obviously a lot. It's sort of, it's really hard to pick one. And I know I'm going to probably ask this question quite a lot, but I think everyone was so unique and special for different reasons. And there were even different games, like dare I say it, even winning, uh, sorry, losing the uh, Commonwealth Games in 2010 in Delhi was a highlight, possibly for every wrong reason that whole entire experience was something I don't think any of us have ever had before and it was certainly incredibly eye-opening very memorable as I said for probably most of the wrong reasons but um, that certainly sticks out just because of what that whole experience experience was like both playing um, but also being in India itself um, I think if I probably look at one thing it would the Commonwealth Games in 2014 was phenomenal and I think a lot of that was because of the team that we had during that time um, and also it was polar opposite to Delhi four years prior um, where we actually got to really go out we got to enjoy Glasgow we got to really enjoy the Athletes Village as well which it wasn't like that when we were in Delhi um, and to beat New Zealand by 18 goals was a very strange feeling because <laughs> those games are never that close. Um, but 2015 was also incredibly special to win a World Cup, um, to do that on home soil. There's so many other pressures that come with that um, and so many other ways and directions that you're being pulled when you host a, a, um, a World Cup tournament and to, to play with, you know, girls that are played for such a long time and particularly alongside Julie Corletto um, and to finish playing alongside her. We made our debut together um, and to be, be a part of that World Cup, um, yeah, with her was, was incredibly special as well. Just before we started this chat, Nat, um, you had to go and comfort baby Edison. How's he going and are you enjoying being a mum? Uh, he's going well. He's a feeding um, machine. He loves loves his food. So he's grown so much. He's nine weeks. Um, he was nine weeks on Tuesday, which has gone um, eerily, really quickly. Um, you know, everyone says that they change and grow so much, and they do. But I think I thought being in lockdown and the situation over here in Melbourne that the days would drag out. So the fact that it's been nine weeks um is incredibly shocking but yeah he's he's been amazing and being a mum is a whole different ball game um you know I find it unbelievable that they actually allow people to leave a hospital you know sometimes it might only be several hours later or a few days um with this 
little human that they need to go and care for <laughs> with, with no prior training or, or really anything like that. I find it quite surreal, but we're all alive. So that's um, <laughs> a big, a big positive. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. We're obviously incredibly obsessed with him and um, I think very grateful falling pregnant was um, a little bit harder than what I, I had always thought it would be. So the fact that we have him and he's healthy and, we get to spend obviously some pretty incredible quality time with him whilst lockdown is happening is um, yeah, certainly very special. You talk about quality time. Hopefully all the Collingwood girls still can become his aunties because you'll no doubt you'll be wheeling him um, over to training like Sherelle has done with her children, taking them to Vixen's training. Yeah. Well, the only um, player or there's only two girls that have actually met him. Um, so one of the girls lives just down the road from me. So she actually was the first one to meet him, um, which was the day we got out of hospital. And now at the moment I've been training at the Holden Centre. Um, we have the, I guess, which is a great loophole to actually interact with other people, but being elite athletes, we have an exemption to go and train at the facility. So um, Brazzy has been able to see him and hold him, which was great, but yeah, no one else has met him. So, um, and that includes our family, which is really scary. Both of our um, families are in SA. So it's quite, um, I guess, sad in a lot of ways that they haven't been able to meet him and we don't know when that time will be, but um, yeah, hopefully when the girls get back from this, from Queensland, that things will have loosened a bit and we can actually catch up and yeah, they get to have some cuddles. You mentioned SA, you, you, you grew up in uh, country SA is my understanding. Um, can you see yourself moving back to SA or you're going to stay in Melbourne? Um, at the moment we'll be in Melbourne. Um, I just actually, um, well, probably for at least until the end of 22. I just signed a, mm. a contract with Commonwealth Games Australia, which is very exciting, which will see me working through to the um, Birmingham Games in 22 um, until the end of that year, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I don't think we'd move back to country SA, um, but I mean, anything's an option. Both of us have moved around a little bit. My partner, Samuel, he's from South Australia as, as well. Um, but, you know, he spent a lot of time in Perth. So I guess we're, we're open to um, anything. We'll just sort of see where things go. But I think certainly being closer to the family would be nice. Um, I know they would want that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, wait and see. Just on your role with Commonwealth Games Australia, um, what, kind of, what kind of things are you going to be doing in that role? Um, so I start on Monday, so nothing like doing things by halves. So I'm retiring, mm -hmm. just go head yep. first straight into a full-time role. Um, and um, uh, I got the role, which is a new role, as the community engagement manager, which is really exciting. Um, there's a, a massive focus on um, that's it, well, what the role actually says is that community engagement piece. I'll be working with past and present athletes so around the alumni, um, also in some of their charity um work that they do um school programs things out in the community events their foundations as well um that they have so it's quite a um a big role broad role which i'm really looking forward to and to be able to stay involved in sport um is going to be great and particularly at that elite level obviously in a very different capacity which um yeah which will be nice and you know i obviously had the absolute honor of going to two Commonwealth Games. So to now be on the other side of it and help, um, I guess, grow this, um, the, that event um, here in Australia is going to be incredibly exciting. It's a very small team. Um, but, yeah, certainly one I'm looking forward to, um, to getting stuck into and, I guess, putting my professional hat on um, mm. away from the netball court. What kind of a legacy do you feel you'll leave at not just Collingwood, but also the wider Nepal community now? Um, to be honest, I don't really know. Um, it's, quite, it's quite a strange one because, you know, I think I've had a career that I never, ever dreamt of. Um, it's been 
you know, when I was a young kid growing up, eight hours or four hours southeast of Adelaide, um, you know, we used to do round eight hour round trips to go to training. Um, when I was that young kid, I wanted to play basketball and go to America and meet Michael Jordan and that obviously never happened. And so being a netballer, we actually weren't exposed to netball at this level. Um, being in the country and obviously the sport has now come so far and um, I guess that's probably one of the biggest things is I hope I've helped progress the sport to where it is now. Um, I obviously walked into it when it was in its infancy of becoming more professional and um, having certain pay conditions around for players and I first started as a delegate within the Players Association and I've just seen it grow and I hope um, you know, particularly over the more recent years that I've had a big um, impact or influence on where it is at the moment and, you know, have left it now in a somewhat a good shape for, you know, the next people to then get their hands onto it and the younger generation to keep pushing it through. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And obviously my competitiveness, I love to play. Um, you know, I don't shy away from that or apologise from getting a case of white line fever. You know, you're not out there at this level just... For the fun of it, um, you know, you're there to have success. And um, I guess Nat, on the domestic scene, um, I would have liked some more. Um, but, yeah, I certainly have loved just being competitive and, you know, playing with and against the best players in the world. Um, you know, there's nothing like it. And I guess hopefully I've either encouraged young kids to stay in the sport to be goal attacks. We are the best. Um, yeah, and just, and then hopefully out of my teammates as well that, um, you know, I've helped, you know, support them and, and allowed them to get the most out of themselves as well. Can you still, still see yourself involved in netball in some way? Because I spoke to Maddie Brown when she announced her retirement last week and she'd still like to play at some level. So can you see yourself playing VNL level or local netball or maybe just some kind of coaching consultancy work later on? Or what, what can you see yourself doing? <laughs> I really don't know. Um, you know, I think in my mind, I, you know, uh, and I know Maddie has said it, you, you don't, you never say never, um, but I'd say highly, highly unlikely. <laughs> um, I've got no plans of playing social netball or going to VNL or anything like that. I'm looking forward to this next phase. Um, I'd love to stay involved in commentary. I love the media side of it. Um, I'd love to do more of the things off the court still to be able to help um, as I said, the progress, the sport um, and, you know, conditions for athletes and those sorts of things, um, even if not in an official capacity with the Players Association, but, you know, maybe through some consultancy or, you know, being being asked to help support certain things. So um, I've always been asked about coaching. I don't know if that's just a general question every player gets asked or if people mm. actually think I would be a good coach. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's that for me is something I've never really um, followed or, you know, really chased, um, I guess, developing that side of me in that coaching space. But, um, yeah, as I said, you, you never... You never say never, but um, I think I, I highly, highly unlikely you will ever see me back out on court. But um, stranger things have happened then, so who knows? <laughs> have you and uh, Maddie Brown had a chance to have a chat with each other and re reflect on your careers? Um, only very briefly, just through text. Um, I have I've tried to call her after she announced her retirement, but she was mm. um, quite busy with all the media stuff that then goes along with that. But mm. it was quite strange because, you know, we never really got to play a lot of netball together, um, except for probably 2014 was the big year with the Commonwealth Games. And, mm. um, you know, she was injured, missed out on 2015. And, um, and then... Um, I stopped playing with the Diamonds in 2017. And so we thought we were never going to have the opportunity to play netball again. And we actually had that phone conversation when she announced her retirement from international netball. And and then it came up that I was playing at Collingwood and we thought we would get the opportunity. And, and sadly, that was only very brief and, and during pre-season before she did her knee. And then we didn't get to the chance to play again this year. So I think once everything settles down and... You know, the girls obviously get back from, from Queensland and hopefully um, lockdown here in Melbourne um, yep. stops so and we can actually socialise. It'll be really good to catch up. I think that's made this whole retirement quite 
surreal for me and and it's quite an eerie feeling um you know i never even whether i'd even been on the sidelines i never got the opportunity to announce my retirement face to face to my teammates mm. um which isn't normal um you know i can't even go out and celebrate for a dinner or have a drink so it's um yeah as i said it's all a bit it's strange so i'll be looking forward to hopefully being able to do that and i guess somewhat get a bit of closure on this these last 17 years all right nat thanks very much for joining us today really appreciate having a chat and reflecting on your career and um I will always remember you having a chat to me in the tunnel before you went out on court, just saying good day. And also a couple of times after NA Awards, going out and hitting the tiles and having a drink too, they were always fun as well. <laughs> they were. I'll certainly miss those. But no, thanks so much for the support, Ben. And yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Nat. Thank you.